Today, we got the third episode of the Mascarilla podcast, and we're here with Cyber. Cyber, that is your name now, right? Like, I yeah. was like going to say your name. I don't want to say a wrong name. No, nah, I'm, I'm set on Cyber. That's it. Like, that's 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 it. There's no more changes after Cyber. It's okay. That. So, for the people who don't know who you are, really quick, how old are you? Where are you from? What I'm kind of music do you make? I'm from Washington, D.C., DMV area. I'm 21. Um, Prince George's County, Maryland, all that. Yeah, DMV. Shout out DMV. And uh, what kind of music would you say you make? I make like experimental rap, I guess. And like just uh, otherworldly, I guess, shit. I guess. Okay. But but it doesn't sound other earthly and shit. It's just like the the emotions I feel whenever I make something. And I just go with that. I just go with whatever hits me first. Okay. So there's some stuff I want to get into, but before we even touch on that, let's yeah. take it all the way back. Let's go back. Growing up, what was life like? Uh growing up was um it was, it was weird. It was weird as shit. I was like, I grew up in like a pretty Christian household, but my dad was kind of like excluded for that shit. It was just like my mom and my brother and shit. And we just like have to go to church every fucking Sunday and shit. I was questioning religion very early because it was just like, damn, like we're weak. We have to pray to something in mm. order to be stronger people. Like that's kind of weird. Like we are created to be already strong, like minds and shit. Like humans are humans are humans like what the fuck like what is up with this extra shit so you were even having those thoughts when you were like 12 years old like seven see my parents made me go to church every sunday as well actually saturday night but every oh, you true. know saturdays too. and i was like i don't want to go because i want to hang out with my friends i wasn't having these like existential like you know so you're pretty advanced for your age even yeah. back then when you're seven years old yeah so what so you grew up you had siblings? Yeah. Uh, younger brother. So I have a brother. what were your parents doing when you were They're, like growing up, middle school, high school? Um, just working. Uh, my dad was like just working for the Capitol for a bit. I think he still does and shit. The the Capitol. So what's what's that? Uh the Capitol building in DC. Oh, so like, what is he doing there? Is he like, like he's like a architect? Oh wow, really? Not not really architect, but he's like he works with architects or some shit. Mm, okay. Yeah. And your mom? Um, she's uh she just works like retail for right now, and it's like uh trying to get her out of that. Yeah. Yeah, trying to get her out of that. So what was like middle school, high school like for you? Did you have like a good friend group? Like, were you playing sports? Like, what was it like growing up? Growing up was more, it was like super fucking annoying for me because I was just dealing with other kids bullshit forever. <laughs> they would not let me live and get away with shit. And I think that's why I do the crazy shit I do because it's like, all these voices telling me like, all right, you're shit. Like you're, you're, you're that nigga over there. We got to put you over there. Cause mm -hmm. you're like, you're too much for us, man. And it's like, no, you, you ain't, you ain't one of the niggas, bro. Like mm -hmm. you, you're not one of the niggas, bro. Like just, just, just straight up, like stop. Like It was just like, whatever. Then, then when I started making music in middle school, that's when it was like, Oh, oh, this nigga makes some. Oh, let's just fuck with him just because he makes some. Let's just leech off of him. Ha ha. Type, <laughs> that type of shit. So, um, so from a young age, you were pretty much, or you were like into, the outcast. I was always in. Yeah, I was always the outcast. Yeah. So, what inspired you to make music in middle school? I mean, that's like a pretty early age to get into it. I will always have shit playing in my bra brain, and I would listen to the stuff that I'll be playing in my head forever, like little melodies and shit that I wanted to make, but I had no way of making them yet until I met my cousin, Kid Beats. Shout out Kid Beats. Uh, he told he he was the first one that told me about FO Studio when we first met, and I was like 12. 
And then from there, I was just like making beats and shit. So what kind of music were you listening to when you were 12? Like what were the inspirations? All trap. It was just trap. trap. So what? You're talking like Waka Flocka mixtapes? Waka Flocka, Wooda Kid, OJ the Juice Man, Gucci Mane, um, all, all the South shit. I think Atlanta, all the Atlanta shit. So when you're recording that music, what are you doing with it? Like, is that before SoundCloud or SoundCloud before, around? Before SoundCloud. So you like you put it on Bandcamp, or you're just not even you're just recording it to record it. I was uh, I was putting it out at first on YouTube, then SoundClick. Mm-hmm. At the time, I don't know if motherfuckers remember SoundClick, but I remember I remember SoundClick. Yeah, shout out shout out to the niggas that know. <laughs> I remember like Share Beast or like. There were all those little tiny sites where you could upload it and then your friends could download it. Oh, I I wasn't hip to those. I was just hip to like YouTube and shit. Mm. Because I knew YouTube was the place to be forever. Because like I used to watch like all kinds of YouTubers at the time and shit. Like that. I was that. I was that. I was on that side. Yeah. Internet. Yeah. So is that music still out there somewhere? Like, is that uploaded? Yeah, it's still on my old YouTube. It's, I just, it's just privatized because I'm not even going to unleash, unlock that shit. It's not coming out. It's just not. It's just going to stay private forever. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. feel you. Cause so, it's, Cause it's annoying once they find your old shit and they keep like trying to rehash it and trying to bring it out. It's like, I guess, I guess everybody can drop off now. We're still going to make new shit. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's like definitely something I want to get into a little bit mm. um, about the fans, but okay. So from a young age, you're an outcast and you don't fit in with the rest of the kids and you start nah. recording music. So yeah. Did you kind of come into your own in high school and be more comfortable with who you were? Or like, what was then like high school? Like high after? school was like, yeah, it was like, it was like, yeah, it wasn't the best. I would just hang out with whoever was funny, I guess. And then like, they'll fuck with me as a person, not just cause like I made shit. Um, I had, I had like some friends in there, like some friends from middle school that I didn't really know, know until high school, like Leon's Wolf, for example, that's my nigga. Um, there's like some other kids that we knew around that time. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so, I mean, like, what were you doing in high school? Were you... I was still making music. But, like, I mean, I like, were you, like, a good student? Nope. Or were you not going to no. class? Like, what was it like? I, I was, like, not do homework and shit. I would just, like, go home, make beats and shit. And then during school, I would just, like, just be in class, just, like, waiting to, waiting to leave, like... Cause it was like nothing for me to do there. Like I didn't really talk to people after school, whatever. But um, uh, yeah, I did not get good grades. <laughs> like only the only time I made the honor roll was fifth grade, and then ever since that point, it was just C's, D's, F's, B's, B, C, D's, and F's. Like barely any A's. So were your parents like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, or absolutely. Were they like concerned yeah, they and trying to figure concerned. it out? Yep. Yeah. So like, what were some of their like solutions? Uh, they, they wanted me to go to college for so long and shit. But uh, as soon as I got really heavy into music, I was like, okay, there must be a way to do this shit without needing that kind of schooling or whatever. Because I don't really think, like, they check if you have a certificate in order for them to get you to engineer for them or something like that. Like, I don't think they're just like, oh, where's your certificate? Where's your certificate? I don't think it works like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, okay, you have the skill set. We're going to put you here because you have the skill set. And that's, I think that's what people care about. Like, if you have the skill set, not just the certificate, not just the certificate, but the skill set. So, I mean, did like you ever have that thought of like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to go to college, but I'm going to go get that certificate to be a engineer. Or you were just immediately like, eh, I don't really need it. Uh, 
I was just like, yeah, I don't need, I don't need school type shit. So like, at what point did you start to actually like get some fans and like grow a following? Was that in high school? Um, a little bit, a little bit. Like the thing that I would do was use YouTube, SoundClick, and Facebook, Facebook, all at the same time, and it was like a community all on all three there was like a producer community on youtube a producer community on facebook and the producer community on soundclick and they were each pretty big bases for like music producers to just come together and shit like just come together and share ideas trade kits trade sounds uh get the hookups on vsts and plugins and shit like it was crazy like we were just sharing files with each other and shit it was sick so th- those kids that you were sharing music with are like any of them still active in the scene like is it anyone we would know a like- couple of them that i've seen from back then even remembering different big producers off SoundClick, like johnny giuliano superstar like it's like those guys are still around and yeah. that's like sick John like this Giuliano. is this was 2011 2012 so it was pretty deep it was pretty deep then you were like 15 yeah 15 16 yeah so you graduate high school mm-hmm. your parents are like we want you to go to college but like no so what so what happens after what, that? what really made them okay with me just like being out and about was i think the first time i moved out i think yeah um at that point it was just like okay i'm making enough money to fly around i'm making enough to eat stuff on my own like that that type of shit so was that like immediately after high school you were like did you move out right away or no it took a it took a year after to get the shit jumping and that uh by um, hmm. by the end of high school i already had a base of people that like fuck with my shit like a little fan base and shit but i was i just kept growing my fan base ever since high school and it's just been like going up going up ever since so at what point did anti-world start for for me, it really started 2016, but I didn't really change the name until oops, oops. <laughs> I didn't really change the name until 2017. So to me, Anti Rose been there for a, like a longer period. Like it's just um, it's just like a stronger name for it. Honestly, it's just a strong name. What was the name before? It was Weird Clan. We went with Weird Clan for like. I think three years before I changed it. Mm. Yeah, it was it, it whatever the name. I don't know the name. Yeah, mm. forget it. Anti world boom. That's better. <laughs> but I mean, like more importantly, um, like who were the first members? Like how did you oh, start putting shit. it together? Oh, like shit. Okay. what's some stories there? So it was me. I think my cousin and Leon's wolf. Ghosty, Miklo. Uh, I don't think anybody knows Miklo, but um, he used to rap. He used to rap. Uh, damn. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. But yeah, that was, those were sort of like at least the four. It was uh, my cousin, Leon's Wolf, Ghosty, and Miklo. And then eventually. Uh, cause ah man man ah shit, <laughs> it's it's a lot of members too, so it's like it's deep. But those were the four that were like the first. So the, like the first four though, those are people you knew in real life. Yeah, that was like your cousin and your friends. Yeah. At like what point did you start adding people that like you met on the internet and you know? I added it, it really early on. I started I started with adding people from the internet, but those oh, aren't okay. the same. Those aren't the same members as now. But um, I started like really 2012 adding people from the internet. 2014, that's when I started going around my area and be like, okay, you're in. Okay, you're in. 
Um, and then 2015, 2014, 2015, I think I started going on the internet again and finding more people. I was like, oh shit, that just sounds tight. I was like, whoa, that's wild. Like, so what's that process like of approaching someone and be like, hey, do you want to be a part of my crew? Um, it was something that, uh, wait, wait, what was the question again? I'm sorry. I mean, like, how do you approach people to be a part of your crew? Like, what's that process like? The process is, um, well, it used to be be on Facebook, be a producer or artist. Um, and if it sounds kind of, if it sounds really like different than the rest, then it's like, okay, let's, let's do some or collab a lot, collab a lot. And then eventually they'll be like a part type shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this point, how many members are there? Uh, this point today? Yeah, like right now. Today, of, today there is at least 20 of us. Can you even name all of them off? Is that a possibility? Not all of them, but I'll try. Did I try? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. It's time for Anti-World to rise. Let's get it. I'm going to go with... Here we go. Breaking out the fun. There we go. Because it's like way too many names to just remember in your head. Mm -hmm. I'm just going through all of them. Just going through all of them. Give me a minute, guys. I'm okay. still... I'm typing. Okay. Yeah, so for those listening on iTunes or somewhere else and not watching the video, he has taken his phone out and he's going through it, scrolling through it to find this master list of anti-world members. All right. <clears throat> Ego Mackey. Yes. Win32. St. Pluto. R7. Owen Nielsen. Kid Beats. Dirty Dev. Josh. Babe. Julian Andreas, Devin Will, Shark, Chris Vale, Kyle Slow, Shy, Jimmy V, Ghosty, Leon's Wolf, Eric North, Corpse, and that's it. <laughs> I like how you're like Corpse, Corpse, like this nasty, and then you're like Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to Josh. Shout out Josh for having, you know, like just a real simple name. That's very easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So, lover boy. So, what's uh, like happening with the crew right now? What's going on? Right now, we're trying to do more shows. We're trying to get out here. We're just trying to get out here. No. Yeah. Trying to get out here and do this shit. So, you eventually moved to Illinois. Are you in Chicago? Or are you in yeah, surrounding I'm in, areas? I'm in Chicago. I live in Chicago. Yeah. So, when did you make that move? I made that move last year on my birthday. <laughs> so, you were still living at home before that? I was, I was home after being back from being missing in Colorado. Yeah. That, that was a, that's a whole other experience, but... Right, yeah. so... I was just home before I went to Chicago. So, I do this series called In the DMs, and it's a fan Q&A question, and that one, uh, really, I always ask people, just, like, comment who you want on it, and I'll have them on it, because, okay. you know, it's, like, everyone's first interview. And your name is, like, hands down, the number one people that people ask. Oh, shit. So, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I know this, like, I've heard the music, and they check out the music again, I'm like, yeah, this is fucking sick. And then, like, a light bulb went off, and I was like, oh, wait, this is Syringe. The kid went missing, but he changed his name. And I was like, okay, you know what? I don't think in the DMs is really appropriate for this scenario. Like, probably should just do the podcast. So, I mean, for people who don't know, what exactly happened there? Okay, so last year I had a very, very uh, strong epiphany, but it was all on weed and shit. But what I did was I was in my hotel. I was just learning how to roll my own blunts and stuff. I had weed with me. It was lit. But uh, as I was rolling up, I was already high from like days before. I was talking to everybody and shit. I was just slowing down music on my computer. I was just slow everything down to like the lowest tempo, the lowest pitch, smoke weed. 
I think I dipped one blunt in VIX and like just the tip of the blunt and dipped it in VIX, smoked that shit. And that is shit started going downhill. Like I started, I trashed my hotel room by myself. <laughs> like I destroyed the mirrors and shit. I was talking to people telepathically. It was just all this psychic shit that was going on. And then I leave my hotel room like this, like in like just in the air, walking around half naked in my hoodie. I stopped the police car. The policeman went out and he just started asking me questions and shit. But the way it went down, if it, it felt like so normal for them to deal with a person like that in that situation and shit, I expected just to be outed. But they were questioning me. Yada, yada, yada. I'm tired of being questioned. I leave. They tase me. Um, I'm still sitting on the sidewalk after that shit. And then the ambulance pulls up and I'm like, huh? And so I go from being around the police to being escorted to the ambulance. And so, um, but at that time, I thought it was like a little side project that was going on because it was like these six old white guys, like trying to help me and shit. But I thought there were like six of my friends just like in different bodies. It was so fucking weird. And I was in a different, I was just in hospitals and behavior facilities for all of June last year. Like the entire month of June, I was in hospital after behavior facility, after mental facility, after hospital, after behavior facility. It was just like a loop. that's, That's what happened. So, and, but during that process, no one knew where you were. No one knew where I was. I stopped making contact with everybody on the 4th, but I thought that I was still talking to people till the 7th, and the 7th was when I just left my hotel. But that I remember the dates. It was just like, okay, the 4th. Everybody says the 4th is when I stopped talking to them. And since then, it was just like, what? no, I thought it was the 7th, because I was just like on the computer the whole the entire time until I left. And when you say you put the blunt in VIX, do you mean VIX cough I, syrup? I dipped it in the uh, chest rub. Oh. The vapor rub, yeah. Is that like a thing that people That's do? That's not a thing. That should not be a thing. Don't ever fucking do that. Don't ever do that. So have you ever experienced anything like that before or was this your first time? I, w- I don't know what it was. It was like a psychedelic experience. When you were growing up in high school and middle school, did you have any like like behavioral problems or this was there was like never a sign of anything it wasn't really a sign i just didn't like doing all the fucking work and projects and like doing all the school projects and shit like right but like some kids when they're in school and they're like acting out like their parents are like oh we're gonna take you to the psychiatrist or something and we're gonna put you on pills you were just like a normal kid who didn't want to do his homework so this whole thing with you going missing was just completely like left field it's never so did you get so you were put in mental like evaluation yeah. centers, hospitals. Were you ever, were you in jail for that or what? No, it was just, that was the jail, the mental ward. So how did you get checked out of it? I eventually found my mom's email address and I forgot, I forgot her phone number. I forgot my dad's phone number. I forgot everybody's phone number. I forgot everybody's number. Like I don't remember numbers except like a couple that I use for coupons or whatever. But um, <laughs> I usually so just like, I didn't remember anybody's number. I just eventually remember my mom's email address. And so I went up to the little receptionist thing where the social workers were and the patient, like the patients were on the other side, but where the social workers were, I talked with one of them and I was like, okay, look, this is my mom's email address. Contact her, let them know that I'm here. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to get the fuck out. I'm just trying to get the fuck out, yeah. Because, what, you're 20 at that point? I was 20, yeah. So, th- but they still needed the parent to check you out, or could you have, they they weren't letting you leave without the they, parent? They weren't letting me leave without shit. Because they thought you were going to be a harm to yes. yourself? Yeah. So, what happens? They, they email your mom? Yeah, they eventually get in contact with her, and then, like, I still had to sit there for three more weeks. No, two more weeks, yeah. Yeah. It was a long ass two weeks too. It was not it was this shit did not fly by. It was it went slow. 
<laughs> so very fucking slow. What was it like there? Were you on like lockdown in a room, or you were in like a center? I was in a center full of like other people and shit with the same similar issues and shit. So like hanging around, like people reading magazines, like people talking to themselves. Yeah, people talking to themselves, like. Old bitches reminiscing Afro man in Colt 45. It was just bad. It was bad. There was no, like the fact that there wasn't anything current playing in the centers kind of fucked with my brain a little bit. I thought I was stuck in a different time period, which is like, that's, whoa. That's just whoa, but it was just fucked up. It was just fucked up. <laughs> what was the weirdest experience that you saw in there? Uh, nothing too weird. Well, there was this one, there was this one chick that was like, she was not, she was not with the shits. It's like, she was just like going off on all the staff and shit. She was throwing tantrums, but that wasn't, that wasn't the crazy shit, but it was just like some shit where it was like, uh, uh what the fuck? Huh? She okay? Like, <laughs> but, um, she was just throw tantrums and shit. Like, um throw up in the room i guess like were you staying in your own room or were you yeah, around own, too much people room. it was uh the way their rooms were set up was you had your room for you had two beds in there one was yours and one was another patient's were there like any other young kids in there or was it all i was the only like young one i was the only young one and that shit was like that that set a red flag in my head i'm like oh shit yeah so oh, so what like the average like you wake up like what is that what what's from like what are you doing every I, day i wake up i open the blinds but they weren't like blinds they were just like blinds behind glass behind glass so i would just turn the knobs and shit look at the building across the way like be mad as fuck <laughs> close the window and just start the day by just walking out where all the rest of the patients were and shit. So eventually your mom comes and then you still have to spend two weeks there or you no, spend she two did weeks not your mom? Come. She did not come at all. It was more so like, um, I leave, go back to a friend in Denver and then work on getting the tickets back to back home. Yeah. So when you finally got home, what was that like? Just on medication that was fucking me up even more. Just just on that. Um, from from the from, psych. From the psych. Yeah, from the psych. Yeah. Uh, they had me on anti psychs. So what was your parents' reaction? They seem like a pretty straight laced, you know, religious. No, no, no. They're they're not really heavy religious. It was just like the religion itself was mm. more like the fuck is this. <laughs> But uh, they're they're laid back, more so. Um, they were like, okay, look, take the damn medication, blah blah blah. Um, do this, do that. I had a psychiatrist. Um, I need to talk to a therapist though, or something. Yeah. But we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on that. Um, but no, it was more so, okay, you're back now. Just chill for a bit before you decide to go anywhere else because we do not need that again. But um, since then, I've been in the hospital three times since then. And the, the, the last time was this February, but that's the last time because I'm done doing that shit. So it's, it's not fun. What do you mean? Like what, when you're in the hospital three more times, what's that for? Metal. It was all mental wards. All all mental wards. Still stemming from that time in the hotel. Yeah. So not what, not not all based off that, but. Yeah. So when you're like meeting with the psychiatrist, are they explaining any of this? Like why this could possibly be happening? Or, yes. So they, what? They, so like, they what are they know, saying? They just let me know about the medications I was on and like stuff I should be doing, stuff I should not be doing. Stuff that I should start to look into, uh, like different coping skills, so like learn about boundaries and shit. Cause I'm like, damn, damn, I don't even know like about boundaries and shit like that. It was just like more, it was life skill shit that they taught me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I had no like way of knowing before. 
type of shit. Like I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't know. I just let shit slide until I get to a point where it's like, all right, that's foul. That shit's ending. Type right. Shit. Right. Yeah. I'm that type of guy where I would just let shit slide. Type shit. So but I mean not not, not anymore. Ooh. Exactly. So like it sounds like it's definitely been like a learning experience. Yeah. Would you have rather it never happened at all, or are you in the mind of you know it happened for a reason? I'm, it's a learning experience. I'm like that should happen for a reason because I was high as hell the first time. The first time I was just high as hell. Like I was in Colorado. Y'all need to understand. You're a fucking mile up in the sky. Mm. You're barely getting air in, and you're smoking. You're connected to space, dog. Like you're in space, bro. You're in space. So do you you smoke still or no? Yeah, yeah. So we're I just like, I just stay away from sativa. Oh, uh, I can't do sativa. It's, it'll, it'll fire it. Was up that what it was that time? Probably. I was on. I had sativa hybrids. Probably. That makes a lot more sense now. Mm-hmm. The sativa will make you do some crazy fucking shit. Yeah. Um. So the last don't time do Vix. <laughs> don't do Vicks. Do not Vicks. dip that shit in Vicks. You will die. Please don't. So you you haven't been in the hospital since February. You've been living in Chicago. Is everything yeah. going better, smoother? You feel like you feeling better? Yeah. My girl St. Pluto takes care of me. And she it's it's tight. It's tight. <laughs> so what's life like in Chicago now? Uh I try to bike at least for half an hour just to be outside and get my brain pumping. Um, work on music, check to see, check the businesses, see what's going on with them, and then just um, try to party. Try to party whenever we can, you know? Because that's, that's kind of important too, like leaving, doing fun shit, like that's that's important, like having to a schedule for the different shit going on. That's, that's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess to circle back to your music, your like current sound and like what you've settled into over the past couple of years, like what would you say like the influences are there? It's still a lot of trap, but it's a lot of stuff in my head that I hear and that I want to do. Like if I wanted to just like do some dumb shit, like I will, like I will without any thought after it or before it. It'll just be like, oh, oh shit, I'm okay, I'm about to do that. It's done. And then from there it's just like like yeah. Yeah, because like one of my favorite songs by you is a song A. Uh, I think it's genius. I think it's you know very beautifully avant garde. <laughs> uh, but so people kind of describe you as a troll. Is that song not entirely a troll or is that like a statement on music or is it just like, I'm just going to fucking do this song and I'm only say the I'm just going to do it. Like I recorded it in a closet, like mad as fuck. So I was just like, all right, this is what y'all want to hear. Y'all want to hear all this fucking suicide boy shit. All right, here I go. Here's my version of fucking trash. Here's my version of fucking fucking around. Like here. <laughs> So I was just in the closet. I was like, <laughs> I hit record. I was like, hello? All right, blah, 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 blah. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And it kept going for like three minutes. The whole song is actually three minutes. I don't know why I did that shit with YouTube where I just cut the audio. <laughs> but it's actually three minutes. <laughs> so the song A, you only say the letter A throughout the whole song. Yeah. You have a song titled B as well, right? Yeah. But B is different. Very different. You're not it, just it saying has, the letter it B. Has lyrics. It, it's, I do not say B once. Was that the book? <laughs> do you even say any words that start with letter B or you just don't say B? I don't say I didn't B. even catch that, to be honest. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I hit play on B and I was like, oh, this is going to be funny. It's going to be a song where you're saying B, B. But then I was like, oh, it's funnier. He's not saying B. I didn't catch that. You don't even say anything. <laughs> you're yeah, a fucking no. genius, dude. Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. So then from like those kind of songs to a song like 101 Dalmatians. Uh, shit like that. I don't get why people gravitate towards like shit like that and shoot the party. In my head, I'm like, yo, 
All right, I'm going hard on this song. I put it out. It doesn't get the same attention as this dumb song or that dumb song. But with shit like Shoot the Party and 101 Dalmatians, it's like, all right, I took the time to push it into this and they actually take off. And in my head, I'm like, wait, that's kind of weird to me. Like, what the fuck are y'all saying? Like, can y'all make a decision? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, where would you say a song like 101? Like, where there's that... Where's that fall on like the top ten of your favorite songs? Is it even in there, or no. like you're just only pretty much doing it because you can? Yeah, because I can, and then I just move on to the next one. Is there any kind of like motivation? Because now you know you're living in Chicago, you're supporting yourself from your music. Is there any motivation to kind of, you know, like I don't even know how to say, it, but kind of make more like pal- palatable, palatable like like yeah, music accessible? to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can do that. Like, I'm able to. Like, I have the ability. It's just like, what am I going to do differently? Type shit. It's like, right. what, 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 what flavoring? What kind of seasoning am I going to add on top of this? Because, That's like, I, I also really like that song as well. And yeah, it's melodic, but also like the production. No, it's that's like not mine. That's not my beat. It's like kind of strange. Mm-hmm. You know. So like, I feel like that's like almost the key it's like it's like your version of what like a pop song is but it's not like you just doing a pop song it's like your own like you know Mm -hmm. like uh, unique way of doing it Mm -hmm. but um you said it's on your beat do you like find it harder to work with producers than it is to produce your own stuff or like what's your favorite thing to do my favorite thing to do is just like um making the beat making the beat this is fun. Like, uh, if people don't already know this, it should be obvious that I'm landfill. Like, this is the most obvious thing that everybody should fucking know. I don't know why people play with my time. I don't know why I allow people to play with my time. Like, that's why I'm on, like, a, a little break from the internet. Because, like, one, that shit's not real. And two, being a human is really important. Like I kept saying, <laughs> Months for like months. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to live. Yo, I'm trying to live. Like, yo, I'm trying to live. And they they take that statement as like, oh, that's a new meme. Like, no, nigga. Like, I'm trying to fucking live. That's that sentence. Period. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I don't get it. I think we kind of touched on that earlier, and I was like, yeah, let's like save that and loop back on it. But what's your relationship with with fans, especially underground rap fans? It seems like. You know, they're like, uh, don't really want change. They kind of want to keep people doing the same stuff that they fell in love with. And they will die doing that. Like, I could I could literally lose myself doing that. And if they want to see that, then that's on them. But that's not going to be what they see. <laughs> like, they're, like I, I expect fans to leave so new people can, like, come on into the party. Honestly, that's my mindset. Like, look. If the shit's getting too crickety or rickety for you, you're always welcome to leave and go to somebody else like they did so many times with like our shit in the past. Like they choose this, they choose that. So here, like you don't feel do when you're like in this studio, you're never like, damn, what do my fans want? You're just doing what you I'm want. I'm just and it's doing like- what I need like to get out of my system. I do this shit to get the shit out of my system. That's what I don't think people realize that. Like, I do this shit to get it out of my system. It's, like, essentially... It's a, it's a release. It's, like, your version of therapy. It's the release, yes. Yes. Uh, what's the most... Until uh, I get a therapist. Which is soon, apparently. Apparently. You know, and maybe you should bring a microphone to the therapist with you. Oh, shit. <laughs> you just need to find a therapist that can produce. Oh, my God. <laughs> that can be at a least, whole album. At least we could have a good ass discussion while they're making a the beat, and it, then it's like, oh shit, like, I, oh, this, okay, no, okay. No, yeah, no. that's a good plan. That's a good plan. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, what's the most annoying fan misconception about you? Like, what are you tired of hearing? Except the question, why would you change your name? What's like the other? You know, the other one that grinds my gears. <laughs> Fuck. The other one that grinds my gears. I would say the question, are you landfill? But like, I just, I just broke that down earlier. So that's, that one's out. Um, 
I don't know. It's just collectively, I just hate seeing all the questions and the questioning, but I keep looking at it. So it's like, it's just feeding more anger to me. So what I'm doing now is just turning off my phone. Yeah, smart. And yeah. I'm just turning but, off. But I mean, are you the one running anti world, like the social media accounts and stuff? Like you run the business or no? No? Shout out to Denton, social media manager team. But I mean, you're like the head of it, right? Yeah. So are you running like the business when it comes down to like a tour or a show? Yeah, you're the one that run, has to go through. I run the merch. Yeah, I run the merch. Like the merchandise site, I run that. That's what I run. But um, just looking for interns or people that know how to do shit. So shit will run easier. Yeah. So you're in Chicago. Where's everyone else? There's people still are in D.C.? We got PG County, we got Ohio, we got North Carolina, we got Texas, we got New York. And yeah. So Ohio. what do you think the plan is for the future? Do you think it works well that way with everyone spread out? Or is the idea we're we, going to get a house have, one day? We have to unite eventually. Like at some point, we all have to like unite. Like that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate goal. Just unite for however long. Even get a even get a whole place. Yeah, get a whole place. Just, shit will start happening. What do you think? Some of the struggles are with you're the uh, like front man of a rap crew, and you know you're running the business and you're doing the merch. Like, what are some things that the fans would never even realize that, that they like, would? They don't. You, I you think, have to do every I don't day. think they realize that I do a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why I get annoyed so easily because I do a lot of work, but I'm cutting down on the work that I do. So I focus on the music and making like better music because I don't feel like the music I even make has like even ding dinged my head. Like it's not, it's just like work, work. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt like work. Cyber Soldier Mac didn't feel like work. It felt like fun again. Like, it actually felt like a fun project. Even though a lot of old fans hate it, I don't care. It's a good-ass project. It shit sounds sick. It's going to be, like, more shit, too. Like, I don't think, like, why does why do people treat shit as, like, it's the fucking end of the world? Like, God damn. Like, <laughs> dude. Like, dude, yo. Like, shit. Shit's still going, man. She will keep flowing. So, like in an in an in an ideal situation, you can just handle the music and the art, and you have other people running the business. Do you have a manager and an agent? Like, what's that whole process like for you? Um, it's kind of blank right now. I don't know, um, but I do think we have a manager in the group. Hmm. But he manages another member of the group. Right, I think yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So when I hear you guys. So we're all in the Twitter message group together. It's called Anti Gorilla, which I oh, think is fire. <laughs> so when like I hear people saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna like we're fucking planning a tour or something," who's planning that tour? It's not the agent. Who's? It's just you guys just hitting up people you know in each city. Yeah. Would you like rather have it that way, or is that something that you want to work on? Or any way, but like a manager would be like the anything that's like the easiest route. I would say, like, going through a manager is, like, an easy route. Yeah. We could do this shit ourselves, too. That's what we've been doing. But, like, trying to juggle all that shit in the same breath is difficult. Yeah. Did you, like, so did you ever get in, like, to the underground rap scene, like, the current L.A. underground the, rap scene? Like, are there people that you've, like, watched and be like, oh, I like the way they do it. We're going to try and do it similar like i know it's like not it's like not like no one ever wants to say they're like you know inspired by anyone but i mean like in general like were you ever into any of this other shit or uh i appreciate what adam does adam uh will ham on everything yeah i appreciate what he does i appreciate what you guys do you no. guys cultivate events right yeah yeah okay yeah yeah we have uh the unmasked concert series we've been doing that for five years okay. so like we did like such hello warrior boys first show before they're even officially called that not their first show but their first show that wasn't their own mm -hmm. and had them open up for i future and like tyler was there and like oh, that was shoot. the first show i ever threw 
Mm-hmm. And then we did like, you know, everyone's like Young Lean's first LA show, Vince Staples first LA show, Denzel Curry, so mm-hmm. that, like, you know, we've been doing it for five years, so pretty much everyone. But I mean, are there any of like those guys who have kind of came before you that you're like, oh, they did this a cool way or like, oh, I like, you know, the way their shit sounds? Uh, barely. Yeah. Barely. I'm just too focused on winning type yeah. shit. Like, my, my brain is like, gotta do it. Gotta do it. <laughs> gonna do it. Gotta do it. Gonna do it. That's that's my brain. Yeah. And then and then the other side of my brain is just like melodies that play. And it's like, fuck. I just try to grab it. That's all it is. Music is like trying to grab shit from your brain. Translate into the doll. That's what it is. That's what it is. Incredible. So what are you listening to these days? Are you listening to like you listen to bands? I listen to I listen to that uh band shit probably. Not not bands, but I do listen to that his type of music. That type of music. I do listen to that. Um some metal. So some, like some house. So like who? Like what are some names? Um for house, I don't I never know. Or for, like, for metal, like what are some know. like bands that you're listening bands to? Bands I really like is Reigns of Saturn. Like I really love Reigns of Saturn. Like shout out to Ghosty for putting me on to that. Like I love I love Reigns of Saturn. And um Death Haven with their project, Sunbather. I think I play that a lot. I play that a lot too. So yeah. Those are those are my big two, I would say. Because like what like what genre would you, would you even classify your music as? Um, I guess rap, left field rap, I guess, but not entirely left field because it's not always left field. Because yeah. you said you're like listening to a lot of trap and like early Waka Flocka, mm-hmm. and like when I see your music and when I hear your music and see your music videos, I'm like, oh, he must have been into like maybe metal in high school uh, or like hardcore in high school was nah, like there even, and yet now i was still i was like i think i got dumber because of trap because of listening to it for so long and like there's barely any lexicon that i know and can grab on latch on to and shit but that's pretty much been middle school and high school like trap music like that shit like the real real trap music hmm. so not to get into any like specific beefs or any issues, but like, mm-hmm. what's it like coming up in the underground? And there's like other crews, and there's other people who are just as ambitious as you. Mm-hmm. Is it hard? Like, is it hard to see other people? Like, you see someone else do a show, and you're like, fuck, why are we doing a show? Or like, is that what's that like when like you're coming up while other people are coming up for like yeah. that same spot? It's still a battlefield at the end of the day. I don't know why people are acting like it's not. And I don't know why people act like they're cooler than it. But it's just what it is. Honestly, it's just what it is. Like if I'm at that point where I'm like mad that somebody's like doing some other shit and I just got to improve and like get to that point. Like, I just got to do it my way somehow. Um, but other than that, it's art of world on these, art, it's the art of war on these niggas. Art of war on these niggas. That's, that's my take. It's art of war on these niggas. So it's like pretty much a sport to some degree. It's, it's like, it's still a sport. It's, right. it's still a sport. Whether motherfuckers hate it or not, it's still a sport. Right. Yeah. So, what do you think the next uh, couple years look like for you and the crew? I don't know. Honestly, honest to God. I, I mean, like, know. what do you want to accomplish? I like, want to accomplish You mentioned a lot. that, you know, like, you might want to get a house sometime soon and have the house? whole crew in there. Like, house, probably. What, you know, like, what else? Um, sponsorships, endorsements, touring, uh, clothing, fashion more better music, more equipment, all that. And what are your thoughts on the music industry being that you're, you know, a underground artist. Mm-hmm. It's this like beautiful scene in the underground. Are you an underground artist who's like, fuck the mainstream, fuck record labels, or Man. like, what's your kind of... I'll tell you what I can get. Type <laughs> shit, type <laughs> shit. I'll tell you what I can get. I'll tell you what I can get. Someone needs to give you a fucking TV show. <laughs> so you don't have any like 
if like the right situation were to come about for like a label or something, you know, it's like you're not gonna be one of these guys who are like deal. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not giving them no fucking twenty percent of my shit. Nah. I, I collect shit already right now. Right. Yeah. Using what like uh create music and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or uh repost network. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I use that and distro kit. I use it all. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, my is like Motherfucker's so iffy out here, man. It's so iffy. Like, goddamn. Like, I know y'all, <laughs> y'all fucking got this shit too. Like, motherfuckers are so fucking fake and wild. Man. Because what you're saying, other underground artists, they try and pretend like they're not doing that. You're like, yeah, man. I, I'm on my own shit, dog. I'm like, man, man, we 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 kicking bricks in this motherfucker type shit. <laughs> kicking puppies in this motherfucker. <laughs> like dead ass. It's just like. Well, I don't even get that argument because literally the least you could do is sign up for like create or repost network and just collect Mm -hmm. and like put on Spotify. Mm -hmm. But you're saying other people, they're like, fuck it. Like, I don't even use those things. Uh, I don't think they don't use those things. I think they're probably afraid to do more because it doesn't look cool. Right. I feel like that's a big thing. But... You well, don't want to do it because it doesn't look cool. That's fine. Well, like that was a big thing. Uh, maybe more towards like the 2015 era of like this underground scene mm-hmm. uh, when everyone was coming up. Like everyone was like, I don't even want my music on like Apple or Spotify or this or that. Mm-hmm. And then like one person did it, then the rest did it, and then like 75 percent of them are signed now. And it's like you know, it's just like you should have just been I don't know making money from your music the whole time instead of trying to be a fucking cool guy and like and make a point. Because you just lost out on years of it for no reason. <laughs> Are we teaching lessons right now? I fucking think so, yeah. I Should I, like, so. start a lecture? Oh, my God. Lecture these fools. And, like, teach kids not to not make money from their music? Shoot. I, I think the worst is when uh, kids don't make money from their music and then other kids take their songs from SoundCloud and put on YouTube, just like with those random YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. And then those channels run the ads on it and they make money. Yeah. It's like, this up. is crazy. Yeah. Some random 16 year old kid is cashing AdSense checks on your songs because you don't want to sign Shout up and out fucking, to fucking AdSense. AdSense. <laughs> yeah. Nah, um, I use, I think I use, uh, nah, I'm not going to say their name. <laughs> I'm not going to say their name. But you, right now, living in Chicago, you're paying rent mm-hmm. with the music oh. and the merch. Are your parents proud of you at this point? Yep. Are they, they all right? They're cool. They're are they cool. like supportive? Very. My like my uncle's like extremely supportive. Like like I would not imagine he even knew of my music and shit. But he's like mad supportive. He's he's more like extra supportive than my parents type shit. Wow. Yeah. Was um so how old is your little brother? 19. So what's he up to? Is he in college? Is he working? Yeah, he's uh, he's in a totally different field. Proud of him. Making art projects. Like, nice sketches. Like, every time he every time he comes home and brings one of his art projects, I'm like, whoa, this shit looks fucking fire. Like, shout out. So he's in college? Mm-hmm. He goes, uh, he's in uh, Ohio. He goes to school in Ohio. Is like he's supportive of what you're doing. Yeah, sick. It's that it's that brotherly it's that brotherly shit where like we see each other doing shit and it's like uh, uh, yeah exactly uh, uh, yeah uh, uh. <laughs> it's like oh, <laughs> exactly that shit, that's the funnest feeling even seeing your cousins in this shit in the same shit mm-hmm. like in the same music shit and them doing shit is like oh shit that's that's sick that's sick was it's just like, a sick feeling was like anyone else in your family like you know like uncles parents grandparents were, were anyone else in music when they were is there any trace of it or is just they say they say that I'm the pioneer like you, cause they're all the rest of them are just like business like my granddad before he died he used to do lots of medicine hmm. my mom she got a degree for marketing. Uh, my dad went to the military, did his shit. Uh, my uncle works like any job. It's wild. Carpet cleaning. Oh, yeah, he, he got a book out. 
Oh, wow. It's, it's fucking wild. Like, the family is some wild shit. Yeah, what's the name of the book? I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But uh, do, do you know, know like about, what it's about? Yeah, I know what it's about. I'm not going to tell them. Oh, okay. They're like fucking crazy kids and <laughs> started hunting down my peoples. And oh, I'm like, my God. Nah, I'm going to have to start calling people. Nah. So you were the first one. You were the pioneer. And they, then they say that, yeah. And they then your cousins that. got into it. Mm hmm. Well, my cousin was already making beats before I made beats. Mm -hmm. He told me about that for studio. Right, right. He was the yeah. one who like showed you how to do it. Yeah, he showed me. Yeah, it was sick. Still listening to Walker and OJ. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you see? I asked you, what do you see in like a couple of years? What's like you know the immediate future? Are you working on immediate. any projects? Uh, immediate future. Possibly a lot more shows, possibly a lot more music videos, possibly a lot more exclusive Spotify jobs. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about SoundCloud right now as a platform and shit. I'm not going to leave it or anything. I'm not going to do anything too brash right now. But I do. I look at the metrics of certain shit and I'm just like studying now. Now I'm like studying studying shit mm. studying shit and like tracing shit i'm just like all right is it, it mm, i don't know do you think at this point more of your fans are on spotify than soundcloud they may be more on soundcloud because they're like younger mm. they might i don't know because i think i feel like with our fan base our fan base is probably younger than a lot of other ones but at the same time i don't know because it, it's still like the, the 18 to 24 demographic is huger than the 13 to 17. So it, it might be different. Yeah. Right. But you're saying uploading more of like exclusive songs to Spotify, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe Projects. like a B-side or something ends up on SoundCloud. Mm. Mm, B-sides. Mm. I, I might think I think about that. Uh, there we go. Uh, We're just you know like figuring this whole thing out together. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So, so what? You working on the anti world tape? Like what's going on? Like we what? Are, we are working on the anti world. Tape. What should the people be looking out for? People you said like more tours. Out. Like that might happen. People should be looking out for Jimmy V, Eric North, and corpses. Should mm -hmm. Eric North and Jimmy V got a project coming? I think Eric North and Ghosty has a project coming. Watch for Ghosty shit too, because he's killing it. He's killing it. He just dropped a drum and bass track with you guys. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. yeah. See, when you fucking send that message in the group chat, so he released a song. He's mainly a producer, but mm -hmm. he sung over it. And your response, and I was like, oh, this is sick in the chat. And you were like, I forgot, I forgot. I forgot. You were like, oh, it's so crazy he's singing over uh drum and bass and like i thought you, you're like fucking trolling me like explaining what it is oh no no no, no. no i know what drum and bass is uh so um who's here in la right now who's here uh my girl maya julian andreas eric north and jimmy I've already spoke to Jimmy. He's going to come by, do it in the DMs. I think maybe Ooh, today, but we should get Eric here too. Fuck yes. yes. We should get any anti-world members. Let's do it in the DMs. Fuck yes. Because you guys are next up. Fuck yeah. There we go. You know there what? fucking go. That's like the perfect way to end this interview. Do you got anything Fuck else yeah. to throw in there? Anti-world, anti-world, anti-world.co. A-N-T-I-W-O-R-L-D dot co. There we go. There we go. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Mask Gorilla podcast. Remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Mask Gorilla. Come find this on Apple, Spotify, maybe. We're not sure. And shout out my guy, Evan Reiner, a.k.a. Gossamer, incredible producer, engineer, recorder for producing this episode and follow cyber on twitter instagram soundcloud follow mascaro there too thank you see you guys next time